When I think of Juneteenth, I always uh, regret the fact that I usually teach my Black Liberation Movements class in either the fall or the spring semester. So rarely do we have um, an opportunity to teach while the holiday is taking place. But it is so relevant for my students in um, Intro to Africana Studies and in Black Liberation Movement. One of the things that we talk about in that Black Liberation Movements class, I pose like a provocative questions, qu question to my students. And it's the question of whether the 180,000 uh, black men or almost 200,000 black men and women who served in the Civil War, were they participating in a slave rebellion? You know, was this one big slave rebellion? And we raise the question, was the Civil War a war to end slavery? And without a doubt, that always leads us to the, to the topic of Juneteenth. The history of Juneteenth is so important for us in the present day. Um, unfortunately, I mean, I, well, it is fortunate that it, we have the national holiday, thanks to President Biden and to um, so many of the black legislators and local activists, especially from Texas, who've been fighting for years, and if not decades, to get a national holiday um, around Juneteenth. But uh, we still have a lot of battles to take, that, to, to fight. You know, in all honesty, Governor Brian Kemp, you know, he signed a bill that would prevent Juneteenth being a paid holiday for state employees. So that's, you know, it kind of just kind of tells you the battles that we have still to fight. But um, anybody thinking about Juneteenth today should think back to 1865, um, you know, the Civil War uh, basically was over um, after the April events of the Civil War, the signing, the Appomattox uh, Courthouse signing of um, uh, the peace treaty, the assassination of President Lincoln. Um, and then in June, you still had enslaved Africans in the state of Texas um, captive, and in particular at Galveston, Texas. So um, in order to alleviate that situation, uh, there was a general, General Granger, who was with the Union Army, um, who was sent to basically deliver the message to Texans that, you know, and to, of course, and to, to, to the enslaved Africans in Texas, slavery is over. So they actually showed up in June, um, and we think it's June 19th um, of 1865, delivered that message um, in Galveston at basically a place where, uh, where enslaved Africans not only built the, the house, but they also laid the bricks. They made the bricks. Um, so it was very, very fitting um, uh, that, that you have, you know, that message being delivered then. Um, but of course, Juneteenth has not been a straightforward holiday, meaning it wasn't like after June 19th, 1865, everything was fine and dandy. Um, black people had to fight in order to actually have the holiday commemorated. And what we have today, in many ways, is like the 1936 commemoration. Um, there's so many people who fought. You know, you have to give respect to uh, people like Jack Yates and to um, African-American men and women um, in various churches who fought to have Juneteenth commemorated. But what we have today really is like the 1936 version of that commemoration, um, which of course took place mainly in Houston. Um, and today, you know, I'm, I'm proud to say that Juneteenth is an international holiday in many ways. Um, you know, uh, doing a little bit of background reading and viewing of, of history lectures. Um, you know, one of the historians said that Juneteenth is celebrated in Nigeria, as far away as places like Ireland and Australia. And that's, that's great, it should be. African American history is an international history. So um, I think today it's really important for us to remember Juneteenth and to, as we gather our strength for this current day civil rights struggle, for this current day freedom struggle that we are currently engaged in.